God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Be blessed as you listen. Hebrews in chapter 11. Hebrews in chapter 11. Hebrews in chapter 11. And I'm going to read from verse 14. Verse 14. I'm going to read a couple of translations just so that we can have a proper understanding of these scriptures uh, written in the book of Hebrews. Hallelujah. And I read from verse 14. It says, now, now, those people who talk as they did show plainly. You see, those people who talked like they talked showed plainly. That's powerful. So the folk who verbalize words like this folk verbalize words, they showed plainly. In other words, their speech declared their intent. Their speech declared their intent. And it says, showed plainly that they are in search of a fatherland, their own country. And in verse 15, it said, if they had been thinking if they had been thinking, not only that they said it, they also thought about something. If they had been thinking with homesick remembrance of that country from which they were immigrants, they would have found constant opportunity to return to it. I read it again. He said, if they had been thinking, reading the Amplified Version, with homesick remembrance of that country, not this one, that country, from whence they were immigrants, they would have found constant, constant opportunity to return to it. Verse 16. But the truth is that they were yearning for and aspiring to a better and more desirable country. That is a heavenly one. For that reason, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Even by his son name, the God of Abraham, the God of of Isaac and the God of Jacob. For he has prepared a city for them, just as he has prepared a city for us. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read from another translation. He said, for proper understanding of the verse of Scripture, I read a new living translation, verse 14. He said, obviously, in other words, it is obvious from this discourse, obviously people who say such things, people who say such things are looking forward to a country from, to a country that they call their own. Verse 15. And if they had been longing for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place. A heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. And now let's go to the old King James Version, my favorite. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. 
I'm reading the same Hebrews 11 in verse 14. He said, for they that say such things, folks who talk like this, declare plainly, show without a doubt, that they seek a country. They are in search of a place. And truly, if they had been mindful, if they had been homesick, if they had been thinking with homesick remembrance of that country from whence they came out, they might have had constant opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly Whereof God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What am I talking about this morning, brothers and sisters? Is that the bridges that have been blown no longer can be constructed. Tell somebody, don't construct those bridges. As I, as I was meditating on this scripture... And we have said this many times over and over again that the bridges have been blown and that you can never return to it. The Holy Spirit kind of drew me and said to me, let me correct your theology. He said that our folks who are spending such amount of energy bridges, building their bridges, the same bridges that they blew up, when they left the country, we are in the left. The folks who've been spending so much time building it again. Because as a church, we've been told that we can never return because the bridge is no longer there. But I'm here to tell you, you can, as you sit here today, be doing some reconstruction and you will never know it. Because your mindset is to return to that place from where forth you have come out. And the folks that we read here are patriarch. They show us some lessons, some spiritual lessons. And if we can just follow in their footsteps, we'll find ourselves in that heavenly country that God has reserved and prepared for you. And so in looking at these verses of scripture, it's obvious that Abraham was on a journey. You remember the story as much as I do. God had called Abraham and said, get out of the land of Or. I'm taking you to a place. And scripture said, by faith, Abraham set off on a journey. A journey that he knew not where it would ever end. But God was with him as he dwelt in tents and dwelt in caves. Until his eyes were opened and he understood that there is a place better than the place where he came out of. He was not drawn back to that land. Like folks who followed in the journey, called the mixed multitude, followed the children of Israel out of Egypt. They also were delivered from Pharaoh's tyranny. They also were delivered from slavery. They also were delivered from the hand of the oppressor. And yet as they journeyed in, in the land of, called the land of wilderness, and there they were yearning back to return to Egypt. And some of them looked at Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt? There were better food and meat. And there were cucumbers over there. There were some lettuce over there. There were there's some graves over there that we could have been buried. And you brought us out here to be buried in the wilderness. You know why they would have thought like that? It's because they lack understanding and lack knowledge. And so what the scriptures say, my people perish. And mind you that, my people not the children of the devil, but my people perish because they lack knowledge. And folk who lack knowledge yearn to return to the land of Egypt. And God was not pleased with them. In that generation, the Lord allowed them to go round the mountain over and over and over and over again until each of them lost strength and each of them died in the wilderness. A new generation looked into the promised land and saw the hand of God and wanted to be with God in the promised land. And the same attitude you see here in the life of Abraham. Bible says that 
people who speak like this are not people who build again the bridges that they have burned. If there are bridges that you have burned in the past, and you're here today attempting to build them, because for some reason your faith has waned, for some reason your enthusiasm has been deflated, for some reason circumstances have come after you, for some reason the wild wind is hitting you so hard, for some reason the devil raised your folk who are talking about you, speaking of you in an evil manner, for some reason you go back home, don't feel like getting into your home. For some reason, you don't feel like getting out of your home. Because the world no longer desires you. But I'm here to tell you today that God is on your side. If God be with you and for you, it don't matter what is against you. In the final analysis, you're going to be on the winning side. Glory to God. I like to put it like this. When the wind and the storm is over. We're still going to be standing. Somebody help me give him praise right now. Glory to God. Look at what scripture say, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 14. It said, and they that speak like this. What is your speech? What is your sayings? Your speech and your sayings create the framework of the foundations of your existence. That's why the confession of your faith saves your soul. What is your speech? What is your saying? How do you see your micro environment? How do you see your spiritual environment? How do you see the things that surround you? Do you look at them from the lenses of God to the lenses of faith? But someone is seeing stumbling block, but a Christian who's born again comes in with the lenses of heaven and sees opportunity. Hallelujah. Where somebody is seeing a stumbling block, somebody else come in with the lenses of heaven, he sees a stepping stone. Hallelujah. Oh, when somebody comes in, look at a wall of Jericho standing by him, but a Christian comes in, he said, this looks like a work for El Shaddai. God can do it, and God will do it, and if he did it before, he's going to do it again. Somebody give him praise in this house. Whoo! That is the difference. How do you speak of yourself? You know the Bible says, love others as you love yourself. You cannot love, truly love others, if you don't love yourself. The folk who don't love themselves. You can give everything that you have to others. You can do good to everybody in this world that you ever meet. But you really don't love yourself. If you love yourself enough, you give your heart to Jesus and make a reservation in heaven. Because our existence does not consist only in this world. Oh, if a man's life exists only in the things that he has. You know, the Bible says he's worse than all men and is a man to be pitied. Do you want to live a life like that? How do you see yourself? A royal priesthood? A chosen generation? Is that how you see yourself? Or someone who is broken, beaten? Someone who is oppressed? Someone who is under? When the Bible says you are on top only, you cannot be removed from on top only. Hallelujah. That's where you belong, where the eagle flies. Glory to God. You belong with the eagles in the highest of the highest of heaven. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as being defeated? Do you see yourself as being owned? Do you see yourself as a failure? How do you see yourself? The way you see yourself is the way you speak of yourself. Glory to God. When you begin to see yourself as more than a conqueror, then your circumstances can no longer stop you. That's what makes a man to stand up and speak to this mountain. Be thou removed and be cast into the other side. And it will be just as he spoke it. Because he speaks under the authority of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't speak of his own authority. He speaks as an ambassador of Jesus Christ right here on earth. But because he said it, I have given you my name. He said, go in my name. In my name, you shall do what? 
cast out devils. In my name you do a heal the sick. In my name you do a raise the dead. In my name you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and it shall be removed. That's the power in the name of Jesus. Somebody holler to him. Give him the praise right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. What is your speaking? What is your saying? How do you speak about the things that confront you? When stuff come your way, what do you say to them? Do you speak words of defeat? Or you speak words as though you are a victor? And your God is in charge of the situation. Glory to God. And this is the lesson, one of the lessons that we get here. It was hard for Abraham. He had a good life in the land of all. It was hard for him. For God to say, leave the very comfort of your home and the inheritance that you would have received from there. And the same reason the disciples came to Jesus and said, we have left home. We have left brothers. We have left sisters. Some of us left wives. And we have followed you. He said, what is our reward? What is it for me in this? And Jesus looked at them, characteristics of them, and said, I know you have left the stand. But he said, in this world, you're going to receive a hundredfold of everything that you have left. That's why I've said it many times. You never lose when you come to God. You are always gaining something. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? And suffer the loss of his soul. That's a difference between you and somebody who is not saved. That you can enjoy this earth and everything that it is in. And when this earth closes, you transition into another place called eternal life. And you will be there internally enjoying with God. That is the promise of God, ladies and gentlemen. But what would you do about it? See, you're constantly being bombarded on every side. That's what Paul said. He said, we're being bombarded on every side. We are being pressed on every side, but yet we are not depressed. Glory to God. It don't matter arrows that flies by new day. Have you seen some of those movies and, and folk running through a hail of fire? And that's what a Christian is. You can go through a hail of fire from the enemy and you come out of it still better than when you went into it. That's the promise of God for you. And David said, even if I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For God is with me. Glory to God. You may be in the valley of the shadow of death right now. I dare you to speak to it. That I have a father. A heavenly father. His king of kings. And lord of lords. If he did it before. He can do it again. Somebody give him praise here. That's why I love him. He saved down there out of the lion's den. Do you know what a lion is? An 800 pound cat. Do you know what a lion is? That somebody would come into the lion's territory. And because he brought God with him. And God stepped in before he got in there. And I told us many times, we have a commander in chief that does not stay in the bunkers, but follows you right into the battlefield. He goes there before you ever get there. He wins the battle and gives you the victory. And you match through it in victory. That's who he is. When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, daddy was there before he got down there. Daddy received him and brought him down. That is shut the mouth of the lions. Glory to God. And I know one who is called the lion of the tribe of Judah. When he steps in, every lion steps out. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. That's what Daniel brought with him. If you can bring El Shaddai into the lion's den of this world, you guarantee yourself victory. Somebody help me give him praise right now. I just love him for who he is. What was it that when we said that mentioned Abednego? That someone who decided that they had offended him because they refused to go back to the country where they have come out of. They refused to bow to the gods of this world. And yet we're thrown into the fire, the furnace of fire, heated up seven times. But I have God of perfection who on the seventh day he rested. Glory to God. And he was about to give measure set in Abednego, rest in the flame of fire. But you see some lesson that we get out of that. That he did not take them out of the fire. But he took the fire from them. Glory to God. They got in there. They rejoiced in it. 
And scripture said, I rejoice. Again, I said to you, rejoice. Where are you right now? Where do you find yourself right now? What is your speaking? What is your speech? What is your saying? How do you handle the things that come after you? If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were able to handle the furnace of fire that burned and consumed those who threw them inside. But yet they came out of it and the king made a decree and said the God of Meshach and Abednego shall be served. And they were promoted. You see, whatever you go through, the furnace of fire, you're coming out with promotion in your hand. Hallelujah. Somebody help me give him praise here. That's the God whom you serve. I'm so glad you came in tonight. I'm so glad you're here today. Hallelujah. And now look at what scripture says. It said, folk who speak like this, folk who speak spiritually, folks, folks who confesses the scripture, those who stand on the Lord's side, those who stand with their Bible in hand, and not only in hand, but their Bible in their mouth. It said, folk like this, folk like this. It said, declare plainly. When they speak, they speak with ambiguity. They speak clearly. They speak, they speak plainly. And it said, folk who speak like this, it said, they seek, they are seekers. They're looking for. They're looking for stone to build a bridge to the other side, not to bring, build a bridge back to where they came out of. Too many Christians are building to return. This journey and this life is forward ever and backward never. <laughs> Glory to God. From the day you sign on to this, you dare not go back. You know what the Bible says? It said, no man who puts his hand on a plow that looketh back is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus was told about Jerusalem and all that were before him in Jerusalem. The scriptures say he set his face to go to Jerusalem. He was willing to confront them. And I said this to you before. Whatever you are not willing to confront, you can never overcome. If you can't confront your fear, you can never overcome your fear. If you can't confront your frustrations, you can never overcome your frustration. If you cannot confront your depression, you can never overcome your depressions. And the stuff you don't deal with today... Deal with you tomorrow. And so these men and women, they, has, they had a speech. They had a saying. Their saying was forward looking. And not backward looking. When Lot was delivered from Sodom and Gomorrah, God gave them a clear word. He said, you're going out of this land. Never you look back on this land. And the wife of Lot thought God didn't mean what he said. And as soon as she looked back, the scriptures say she became a pillar of salt. And then what happened? Some of you, oh, Lot was a wicked man. He should have stopped. His wife just became a pillar of salt. Didn't stop to help his wife. And the kids didn't stop to help her. You know what? Jehovah gave them a command. They all obey the command of Jehovah. And I can tell that they probably didn't realize that mommy had frozen in time until they got out of the land and they did a head count and discovered mommy was missing, had become a pillar of salt. That's what happened when we build the bridges back to Egypt, to the place we came out of, to that lifestyle that we have lived before we came to God. But here are lessons drawn from Abraham's story. And Bible say they spoke those things. And they were seeking a country. To seek means to be actively involved. And actively doing things. Exerting energy. And putting in all ounce of power and energy and strength that you can. When you seek what the scriptures say. See you find them. You will need to seek God to find him. I will need to seek God to find him. And again, it was not easy for this folk. And they began a journey. Scriptures say, and truly, truly, if they were mindful of it, it's not just enough to say it. 
It's not just enough to seek after. But the mind, it said if they had been mindful, if all that was in their mind was Egypt, if all that was in their mind was where they came out of, if all that was in their mind was the world, Scripture said if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out. In other words, they were no longer mindful of that country where they came out of. They crucified their flesh and they resurrected their spirit. Again, it was not easy for them. And folks were looking for easy life, easy way out. The alternative tell you here today that you need to pay the price to receive the price. Nobody goes into contest or competition without exerting a lot of strength, energy, and time to prepare for that competition. The Bible says it. You don't run a race without preparing for it. You come in there prepared, you come in there for week, not to lose. Nobody comes into competition saying, I'm going to lose today. I'm going in today, I'm going to fail today. How many of you went to an exam and say, I'm going to fail my exam today? Nobody. Nobody in his right mind would do that. We all go in with an attitude to succeed and to come back home with a trophy in our hand to say, this is what Eshadai had done for me. And so these brothers and these sisters, Abraham leading the charge, scripture said they were not mindful. See, what the devil does mostly has not changed. He plays mind game on everybody, Christians, non-Christians. Play mind game on you. He tells you how good the place you left was. Those habits that we put off before we were saved. He reminds you. Reminds you how good you felt when you were drinking and drunk. Reminds you how good you felt when you shot yourself in the arm with drugs. Remind you how good it felt when you cursed somebody out. Remind you how good it felt when you retaliated. It reminds you how good those life were. But thank God for Moses. Moses refused to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin. So that he may obey the, the words of his commander in chief. The Lord God Almighty. So the enemy plays that my game. On each and every one. And what we do about it determines whether or not we continue our journey or we exit the way to our promised land. And there are folks, unfortunately, a little living, living's the whole lump. Say, so, Daddy, I'm just going to do a little bit. And when I go to church on Sunday morning, I confess my sin to the pastor. No, you don't need to confess your sin to the pastor. Pastor didn't die for you, Pastor is not taking you to heaven. Pastor's got his son to deal with. You know who you confess your sin to? The Almighty God. The Almighty God. That's whom you and I have business with. The God in spirituality. Confess your sin to him. He is faithful and just to forgive you. And to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I have no power to forgive sin. I love the way Jesus did. I love the way Jesus did. So you said that I don't have power to forgive sin. He said, wait a minute. And now you're going to see the power demonstrated. He said, get up, take your bed and go home. And the man took his bed and went home. And said, that's the power. If the son of man can do that, then the son of man has power to forgive sin. Only God, only Christ can forgive your sin. The pastor got no power to do that. Glory to God. And so when you come to God mindful of the city that you are going and not mindful from the city that you are coming out. There you are on a journey with God. Don't let the devil play this mind game with you. And not only that, he says all those negativity. He tells you about how, how hard last month was. How he looked like God forsook you. How he looked like fellowship done desire. I look like you were not growing in the spirit. It makes you to look down on yourself. 
and all of your effort that you're making. But you can reach out to God and say, God, deliver me from the hands of my enemy and those who despisefully use me. And daddy will come to your aid in the time when you least expected him to come through for you. That's the power and the love of God. Hallelujah to his name. The Bible said they were not mindful. They were not mindful of the country. From whence they came out of. They left, they were not going back to it. We all left the world. We're not going back to the world. We all left the world. And the desires of the world. We are not going back to the world. Because the world got nothing for you. The world got nothing for me. The world couldn't save me when I needed them. The world couldn't cleanse me from sin. The world can't cast out devils that come against me. The world can't help me. And that's why I go to one who can. And his name is Jehovah. That neither sleep nor slumber. That's where my help comes from. Glory to God. He's the ever-present help in time of trouble. Hallelujah. Somebody help me give him praise here. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He said, if they had been mindful of that, he said they had or have had the opportunity. And I look at this word opportunity. It's a word for time. Same, same word for time. Translated here, opportunity. He said they might have had the time. In other words, they had enough time to change their mind. They had enough time to say, God, we're not going through this journey. Again, like Daniel. When they said, when they brought them to the land of Babylon, they said to Daniel, you are all going to be eaten out of the king's state. But they had been chosen to serve in the king's palace. And they said to him, king had given us the order to feed you all with the king's, the, meat, the food that comes out of the king's table. And Daniel and the Hebrew boys, they said, no, we're not going to defile ourselves with food that's sacrificed to idols. And they stood their ground. And they stayed with it. And the Bible says that when they, when they convinced the man who, whom the king had authorized to, to carry out the, this nutrition uh, process. And after a few days, Daniel and the Hebrew boys were ten times better than the rest. It's not so much as what the world can offer to you. It's what God can. God can make a little thing last longer than what the world can offer to you. You know how he did it? When he said, disciple, feed them. Disciple said, shall we go out and, and work? And even a year's weight of wage cannot feed these people. Now what you got? So we got a little boy here, got some pieces of bread, some pieces of fish. So he give them to me. And he got them all. No, no, if you got just enough for today. But God can multiply it and save some for you tomorrow. That's what El Shaddai can do. That's what he's called El Shaddai. And Jehovah Jared, that's his name. Glory to God. He can supply all of our needs. Anytime he wants. Glory be to God. And Jesus took them. And Jesus blessed them. See, when God blesses your stuff, you are blessed. Nobody can curse you when Jesus has blessed you. When God, when God says you are blessed, you are blessed beyond a curse. Hallelujah. Don't matter if the witchcraft folks will speak evil at you or send spell to you. They cannot come at you because God is with you. Hallelujah to God. And he blessed them. And he said, distribute them. And they began to hand it over to everyone. And as they handed out, he multiplied. And they fed 5,000 folk. Bible say 5,000 men. Not counting women and children. That's the power of God, to multiply what you got. And sometimes we sit there, our speech betray our faith. And we look at what we have as though it's little. And we make God so small in our eyes. But yet he's bigger than all our mountains. The mountains that we see and the mountains that we cannot see. He's the all-powerful. He's greater than anyone. God is almighty. He's mightier. Than all. Glory to God. Come on, help me praise him here. That's why we cannot afford to minimize God 
and maximize our environment and the things that surround us. Let your faith be strong in your God. As this man's faith will. And scripture said they would have had the opportunity. It was not as though the opportunity was not there for them to, to return. They were not robots. God did not hypnotize them. They had their senses and their will. They will not exercise their will against the promise of God. And knowing that the promise of God is greater and better than my problem. Glory be to God. If he promised me, he's going to stand by it. He's going to do it at the appointed time. Just like he did for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why he's God. Hallelujah to God. He said they would have had the opportunity to return. But now, verse 16. Now, they desired. There was a desire and a longing in them. There was a desire in their heart. That rather than being mindful of where they came out of, they had a desire to where they are going. In a lot of time, we're so mindful of our past life without paying attention to our present life. You can spoil today and tomorrow by thinking about all that you've gone through yesterday. You cannot rewrite history, but you can make history. Hallelujah. You cannot change your past, but you can shape your future by what you do today and think today and say today. Somebody help me praise him here. Don't build the bridges to the past. Build the bridges to your destiny by what you say, by what you're mindful of. Hallelujah to God. And by what you seek. Seek you first the kingdom of God, the Bible says. And all of his righteousness. What happened? And all these things shall be added to you. What are you seeking? The Gentiles seek the things of this world. That's what scripture says. What they will eat, what they will drink, and what they will put on. But are you not more prized than a sparrow? Glory to God. And you now greater than the animals. And God feed them. The birds of this world don't put in stock. But God takes care of them. And if God can do that for them animals, he can do much more for you and me. He said not a hair fall off your head that God doesn't know about. He knows everything about you. He knows your beginning to your end. He knew how you were conceived. He knew why you were conceived. He knew why he's kept you alive today. He's kept me for a reason. He's kept you for a reason. And that reason must be fulfilled. Somebody give him praise here for who he is and what he does. Hallelujah. That's why we seek him. That's why we seek the kingdom. There's power in the kingdom of God. And say, but now they desire a better country. God has something better for you than you think. See, we're, we're concerned about those things. Sometimes we're concerned about the things that we could not achieve. Sometimes we're concerned about those who left our lives and left us rather than thinking and concerned about those who are coming into our life that God is bringing to you. The things that you lost, you're so concerned about it rather than thinking about the things that you are gaining. Hallelujah. And I'm looking forward, you're looking backward. Ain't no gain looking backward. Glory to God. Like I said, you cannot, you cannot do anything with the things, about the things that's past. But you can sure do so much about the things that are coming. Hallelujah. If a man falls to the ground, he gets up. He learns from it and he moves on. Hallelujah to God. Uh, the Bible didn't guarantee that you're not going to fall. But your call is greater than your fall. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, sometimes you fall, but you learn to get up rather than stay there. There are Christians who are sitting there where they have fallen and building bridges back to where they came out of. Rather than pick up their bricks and begin to build into the future of what God, the plan of God for your life. And scripture says here, they desire a better country. And that which is heavenly. These folks did not set their affection on the things that's in this world abraham was promised a land called the land of promise god said i'll give it to you and i'll give it to your children and to your children children but yet as we look at abraham here he was not so much concerned about the promised land that flows with milk and honey he looked beyond that jesus said abraham saw my days and he was glad 
He was such a spiritual man who did not consider the things of this world more dear to him than the things that there is to come. He looked beyond his years. He looked beyond his moments here. Scripture said he was seeking a better country, the heavenly Jerusalem. He was not so much concerned about the earthly Jerusalem. He was more concerned about the, the heavenly Jerusalem. Not the earthly one. Not the one that's made with hand. Not the one that's made by man. That which is made with hand and man will fade. They will be consumed with fervent fire. But that which is made by God endures forever. Hallelujah to God. But they desire a better country and heavenly. We are of God. It's not a shame to be called their God. It was God himself who stopped the children of Israel and said to them, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That didn't come from Abraham. That didn't come from Isaac. That didn't come from Jacob. God himself said it. That I am their God. He did not put into consideration all that Jacob had done as a supplanter. But he loved him anyway. Glory to God. His love is everlasting. He didn't, he didn't think about all that Isaac had done. But yet he loved them anyway. He called them. I am the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. And the God of Jacob. The same way he's your God. And your God, and your God too. And he stays in heaven and says, I am your God. Hallelujah. I am your God. Hallelujah. Somebody have me proven praise for who he is. Hallelujah. And because he was not ashamed to call them their God, they were not ashamed to call him their God. That's why we say we have a father, a heavenly father. He's king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah to God. We are not ashamed to call him father. No matter if you have a heaven, an earthly father. God is the father of the fatherless. He'll pick you up. He'll clean you up. He'll dress you up. And he'll fill you up with his presence and with his anointing. And that's what brings a man out of the dunghill. To make him to sit with princes. Even the princes of this world. That's why God can bring somebody from nothing to something. From nobody to somebody. He can transform you from where you have been to where you will be. Glory to God. And when he seats you, no one can unseat you. When he promotes you, no one can demote you. When he exhorts you, no one can bring you down. When he transforms you, no one can bring you back. When he accelerates you, nobody can stop you. That's who he is. And he said, he's your God. He's your God. And your God too. Somebody help me give him praise here. Hallelujah to God. He himself prepared them a city. A city that nobody can take from them. They own it. God gave it to them. God has prepared for you a city. Hallelujah. And nobody can take that city from you. Somebody help me praise him here. Whatever God has done for you, God has done it permanently. Permanently. And no one can take it from you. Hallelujah. These folk that we're talking about, just like a lot of us is sitting here today, we left family. Some of us left family. When you, when you said to your family, I want to follow Jesus. They said, follow him, don't come back home. Hallelujah. Some of us left the comfort of this world. Today it's snowing now, but here you are. You could have been in your home, enjoying the comfort of your living room. But you decide to come into God's upper room. Hallelujah. We are just power and refreshment. Hallelujah. The days of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. When God refreshes you, you stay refreshed in the name of Jesus Christ. When he feeds you, you can hunger no more. Ah, uh, hallelujah to God. He said they left the familiarity of their place and their home in to chase after the promise of God. They look forward in faith, not backward. They look forward in faith to give themselves the opportunity never to return to where they came out of. 
You will have and I will have to make that decision. Whether ever to go back. To go back to that way of life. To go back to that friend. That led you astray. To go back to that place. That didn't encourage you. To go back to that place. That didn't help you. But he said they had an opportunity. Never to return. To where they left. In the same way we also. Must look forward in faith. To all that God has planned for us. The plan of God for you is great. He said I have thoughts towards you. He said they are good thoughts. Not evil thoughts. To give you a future. God wants to give us a future. But we are ready to take that future. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And concerning our Lord. Jesus Christ. Who has passed into the heavens. He looks down on us. To do just like he did. To render to Caesar that which is Caesar. And to render to God that which is God. And no man in Christ. Paul said 14 years ago. Whether in the body. Or outside of the body I know not. See only God knows. That such a one that was cut up into the third heaven. He was privileged to stand in the very periphery of the same place that we look to today called the heavens where God dwells. We have no fixed abode in this life. You have no fixed address in this world. No matter where you are right now, you may claim a piece of land or a piece of real estate as your fixed abode, but you really and I really don't have any fixed abode. Our friend, Father Abraham, walked this land with no fixed address. The Bible said they dwell in caves and they dwell in tent looking for that place. The houses in which we dwell will soon be occupied by others. The path in which we go we soon be trod by the feet of others. The fields which we cultivate will soon be plowed and sown and ripped by others. Others will read the book which we read today. They will sit at the table where we sit today. Lie on the bed where we repose. Occupy the chamber where we shall die. From whence we shall be removed to our graves. If we have any permanent home, it is in heaven. And that we have, and the faithful shall leave, just like the patriarch Abraham had taught us. And the word of God has assured us that this world is not our home. We're just passing by it. We have a place that will soon appear before everyone. And I hope, and I truly hope, that we have made our reservation in that place. That if Jesus comes today, this hour, or somehow we cease to exist in this hour, and I translated shedding this mortal body to transform into immortality, will we have a place called our permanent abode? Hallelujah to God. And this is why these folk that we talked about today, they refused to build the bridge to the past. And they built the bridge to the future. Build your bridge to the future. Do what you can within your power. And let God do what you cannot do. And build it to where God wants you to be. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. This afternoon, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Thank you for your word. Lord, you have set this as an example for us. And Lord, you have encouraged us through your word today. That God, this world is not where we belong. We have no fixed addresses and we have no fixed home. And the place that we see today, if Jesus is sorry, somebody else will see it on us. 
Lord, the place that we walk and trod, somebody else will trod. And Father, we thank you for the encouraging power of your word. Keep us ready. Help us to stay ready. We give you the glory and the praise. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.jciskin.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for 9.30 a.m. intercessory prayer and 10 a.m. services or on Wednesdays for 7 p.m. prayer and Bible study. We are located at 396 Vesey Street, off of Branch Avenue in Providence, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is King, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.